Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is John Mangerati, uh, your town manager, and this is uh, the May 8th edition of Java with John, our weekly uh, radio and television program uh, that's a, a formerly a senior center program. Currently, it's a virtual program. Uh, we have a great panel of uh, guests today. Uh, we're going to get some, some input and some advice and some guidance from the medical community. Uh, and then we have uh, Sharon Mercurio, our senior center director, who's going to uh, share some some thoughts and of course a poem at the end but just to give everybody a few quick updates uh, as, as as you all know on May 1st Governor Baker uh, put into effect a mask order so that everyone is required to wear a mask when you're out in public our local Board of Health also uh, issued an order uh, further clarifying some of that and uh, just to make sure that people know that you have to wear a mask when you go to the transfer station and when you go into businesses and stores throughout our community so uh, we appreciate your cooperation. Uh, we are enforcing it, but uh, we like we we hope that everybody understands how important it is, and we'll do it uh, without having us having to ask them. Uh, we've uh, continued to have our board of selectmen and board of health meet regularly. Uh, as of today, we still haven't uh, decided on a date for our annual town meeting. So continue to follow that uh, in your mailboxes at home. Uh, hopefully tomorrow, you'll receive a six-page uh, booklet of the municipal monthly. Uh, which has all new and up-to-date resources on COVID-19 and how to access different things that we're offering as a community and ways to assist you and your neighbors. So please check that out. Also on the back page of that document is an application you can use to send back to us uh, to apply for mail-in ballot. Uh, we're really encouraging everyone uh, to vote this year in the June 2nd election and do so by mail. It'll help us. Uh, have our poll workers have less interaction with people that day and it will also allow us to vote, uh, have everybody vote and um, get their vote counted. So please check that out. Go to actonma.gov slash elections if you, if you need more information. So uh, we have plenty of time for questions af afterwards. So why don't we just get started right in uh, with the program here. So I'd like to introduce Sharon Mercurio with an update uh, from the Senior Center. Sure. Um, first of all, I wanted to thank everybody. Um, we started this program way back at the be beginning of um, this pandemic to try to reach out to folks that weren't connected with technology. So Acton TV has been fabulous, helping us reach out to the seniors that are not connected. Um, and Heather and John have, have been here every week. So, <laughs> um, well, it's John's program. So there's that. Uh, second of all, I wanted to um, shout out to my mom and all the mothers out there for Mother's Day. It's Mother's Day weekend. And although it looks really different this year, um, Please know you're still remembered and cared for, even if it's um, from a distance. Uh, it was also Nurse Appreciation Week uh, day on Wednesday, so wanted to thank Heather and her department for doing such a fabulous job during this really stressful time. They've been a great support to the seniors and just all the departments and the residents in town. Um, and although the senior center is still closed, the Council on Aging staff is working really hard behind the scenes. We're there for you. Um, if you need anything, give us a call. We have masks, we have frozen meals, um, anything. If you just need to talk, because it, it does get lonely sometimes, um, give us a call and, and we will return your call. Um, Acton TV has also been working with us to try to keep things updated. So we have some new exercise programs. Um, so keep watching um, the public channel. Um, and what else did I have today? Facebook, we um, broke into Facebook last week. So our program manager has been doing a great job giving updates, putting photos, um, just different little things to keep you informed because it is really isolating during these times. Um, and I just wanted to let folks know the COA board is, will be having its first virtual meeting on Tuesday at 10 o'clock on Zoom. So that's something different for us. Um, and then we have been working behind the scenes to, to talk about a reopening plan. So we've been working with John and Mass Councils on Aging and um, Executive Office of Elder Affairs. Um, and I know people would just love to jump right back in because that's what the Senior Center is all about. It's about being together and community. Um, but we're, we're going to take it slow and safe. This virus hasn't gone away. Um, your safety is our first concern. So we are looking at a really slow rollout. Um, and again, it's, it's gonna look different for a little bit, but um, 
we are thinking, we are planning, and hopefully we'll all be together soon. So thank you. Great. Um, thank you, Sharon. Thank you for mentioning um, the reopening. I think it's something that we're all thinking a lot about. We've heard that the governor uh, is, has a reopening advisory board, and their goal is to have a plan uh, for the Commonwealth in place by the 18th of this month. I don't expect the plan will be that everything's back to normal on the 19th, but I think there will be a plan that uh, they're going to lay out to help us understand what the next few weeks and months will look like. So uh, we're, we're looking forward to seeing uh, what, what guidance we get from that. And in the local level in Acton, our organization, we're, we're conducting a similar process where we're all uh, trying to identify what reopening looks like. So. Uh, with that, I'm excited to welcome our uh, first special guest, uh, Sharon Special also, but this is a, a, a new guest uh, to the program, Dr. Edwin Knights. Dr. Knights works at Active Medical, and Dr. Knights is also a part of our nursing program. He serves as our medical control doctor to help Heather and her team uh, with the nursing program. So, Dr. Knights, let me just make sure that, here we go. Yep. Uh, okay. So, let me, uh, so, thank you for being with us this morning, and uh, please. What's it like uh, working over at Acton Medical uh, lately? It seems like it, it's a little crazy, as you might expect. Um, so it's it's um, it's very different. Uh, we certainly are feeling needed right now in the community. Um, it's and and uh, we're doing a lot of our visits televisit now um, and video where people can manage it. So that's that's uh, a struggle, particularly for the seniors. My practice happens to be patients over 70 and first responders and the patients over 70 have had some difficulty getting on with the TV. But um, the, the, uh, in general, you know, we're, we're, because we're pure primary care, we're really, you know, as busy as, as, as we could be given the visit um, people, the fact that people don't want to come in, we're back up to Emerson and we've trained, you know, to do, to go in there, but they're still at phase zero, fortunately, and our docs haven't had to put on the PPE and go in there. Uh, we've, we've put a program in place to, to uh, keep the people who might be infected away from the people who are likely not infected and do that by, um, by uh, screening on the phone, screening again before anyone comes into the building, screening our employees uh, uh, each time they're coming in. Uh, we've had so far about 12% of the patients that we're testing are positive for COVID. Um, and we've had only one employee test positive who had no exposure to patients uh, or, or to staff for four days before uh, she became symptomatic. So we've had no problems with internally with, with any spread. Um, you know, we're, we're, um, we have plenty of uh, PPE, so uh, uh, protective equipment, which is good news. We don't have lots of tests, so we can't test everybody, uh, but we're testing people who have symptoms that would suggest that they need to be tested and, uh, and get that result back within about 48 hours. So those are, that's basically what, what we're doing. We're, we're gradually expanding um, as it's safe and when it's safe. So uh, we're already using our Harvard and Littleton offices uh, mostly as clean sites. And we're using uh, one of the floors at Acton Medical as a clean site. And uh, soon we'll be opening a Hudson uh, and uh, seeing patients out there too. That's great. That's very interesting. Thanks for the updates. When you say 12%, um, are you testing dozens of people a day or? Not, not that many. Um, I'd say it's more like uh, five to 10 a day at this point. Um, we can test more and we, it, as, as the tests become available, we've lowered the criteria for who we test because it, originally it was like you had to be significantly sick and over a certain age. And now um, if you have symptoms, we, we can, you know, if you're a patient of ours and you have symptoms, uh, we can and will test you. Um, so that's, that's, um, uh, made it much more available. But I think still people are reluctant to go anywhere, um, uh, even though they may be sick. In fact, that's one of our biggest problems is that people wait. Uh, they have a heart attack, they've had a stroke, they, don't, they have appendicitis, and they don't want to go into, you know, they, they, they don't want to go into the hospital. And um, so that's a big issue for us. Really? Well, wow, that's, uh, yeah, it's a Difficult time. So we really appreciate your update. Uh, Dr. Knights, I, we've already are receiving several questions for you. So okay. I hope you're ready uh, for later in the program. Uh, for those of you uh, following on 94.9 FM radio, WAEM, 
please send questions uh, if you have any to manager at actonma.gov or you can call uh, in at 978-929-6611. This is the Java with John program, May 8th. We're on YouTube Live and uh, FM Radio. Our next guest is a regular on the program, uh, Heather York, the nursing director for Acton Nursing Services. Uh, Heather, uh, how are you doing today? And um, what, what updates do you have for us? Good morning, John. Thanks again for doing this every week. You and Sharon have been, you know, putting this together nicely with a different group of um, panelists every week. So thank you to Dr. Knights and Karen Patterson, our physical therapist, um, who are here today to join us. Um, so just a little update about Acton itself. We do have 111 positive cases within the town. Um, 58 of those are under surveillance and isolation right now and being monitored uh, by our staff here. Um, the majority of the cases that have fallen off are recovered. Um, they have gone through the process. The majority have not been hospitalized, which is good news. Um, there are, you know, some multiple positives within households, um, you know, spouses, children, um, older children, not young children. Um, so, so we're seeing um, a lot of households that have, you know, one or two positive cases. Um, people are really socially distancing and isolating themselves, um, doing the stay-at-home order. So the contact tracing could be you know huge if people were out in the community and people were working or were at college or schools um, so it, this has really helped to reduce the number of folks that are are getting the COVID-19 so that that's good news um, we do have 30 cases now at Life Care Center of Acton. We sent a news flash out last week. Um, they had tested all of their residents on Monday and Tuesday, um, and then all of their staff at the end of the week. Um, I believe they have 12 staff members who are positive and who are now on isolation. Um, out of those 30 residents, only four of them are out of the facility and in, a hosp in the hospital. Um, one of them I do know is pretty serious. The other three are um, just on supplemental oxygen, um, so they're doing pretty well. Um, so on a lighter note, <laughs> um, it is Nurses Week. Um, National Nurses Day was on the 6th, so I had a friend who actually, I have a show and tell. This is my nursing. <laughs> we hardly even saw that. What was oh. it? That's my nursing photo from, right. from 20 years ago. There, that's me. All right. Here in the corner. So um, a friend of mine from nursing school sent that out to all of us the other day. And it was kind of a, you know, a blast from the past to see that come through. So it, it was a nice light moment. Um, so on that note, I wanted to do a, a little bit of self-care today to talk about that really quickly if I could. Um, but I have a a quote from Florence Nightingale, um, the first nurse that um, really brought nursing to the forefront. So Florence Nightingale said, apprehension, uncertainty, waiting, fear of surprise, does a patient more harm than any exertion? Which I think is so true at this point in time. We've all been, you know, uh, we've had fear, we've had apprehension, um, you know, this, this staying at home and, and not seeing our families um, really can be a challenge for people. So I had, a, I had an email on Nurses Day um, from one of our, my sites that basically gave nurses suggestions for how to reduce stress. But when I read it, I thought this really could apply to everyone. So I just wanted to go through those. Um, so the first one is take a break from, from the news take a break from social media. There's so much information about COVID-19 that is, we're all just overwhelmed. Take a break, step away from your computer, step away from the TV, um, you know, read a book, do something that doesn't give you additional overwhelming information. I think that's the best tip out of this 10. Um, honestly, I've started 
to do that myself. Um, at the end of the day, I'm, start, I'm knitting afghans and reading a book and just stepping away from it because it is, it is overwhelming. Um, the second one is video chat with your family and friends if you can. Um, if you know how to use um, FaceTime on an iPhone, if you know how to use um, Facebook Messenger, and then Zoom. I think at some point there was uh, talk by Sharon and her group uh, possibly putting something out on how to do these uh, video chats. So if, if I'm wrong, I apologize, but I thought somewhere along the line someone talked about it. Um, the other thing is get outdoors. You know, I know there's a lot of uh, parks that have reduced parking and there's some that are closed, uh, but that doesn't mean you can't get outdoors near your home. Take a walk, go outside and garden. Um, or just sit outside in the sun, you know, something to just get you out into nature. Um, the next one is watch a funny movie, watch a comedy, you know, something that you've watched 10 times that you, you love and makes you laugh. Um, laughing does help relieve anxiety and stress. Uh, try an online yoga, tai chi, or meditation class. Um, there are different things on YouTube. There's some apps on um, iPhones and Android phones that help you meditate to learn how to meditate so that's always good. Um, eat nutritious immune boosting foods like citrus fruits, leafy greens, garlic, ginger, yogurt, turmeric, um, zinc. Those are all good things to help boost your immunity so that if you do happen to come into contact with someone who is a positive Hopefully this will help your immune system uh, fight that virus off. Um, the next one is talk to a therapist or a healthcare staff and dis discuss your struggles. They understand. Um, you know, most nurses that I know right now who I talk with, um, as well as Dr. Knights and the medical community, Everyone is very stressed, you know, everyone needs someone to talk to, and it's good to, you know, talk to someone who will understand your struggle. Um, practice gratitude. A little gratitude can help with your mental health. Um, write down three things a day that you're grateful for. Um, you know, so today my, my grateful um, thoughts are that my family is healthy, I have food and a roof over my head, and I'm grateful for my staff here at um, the nursing service who are doing a great job both doing the public health contact tracing but also out in the community still doing our home visits, still seeing patients who are homebound uh, for nursing, physical therapy, occupational therapy. And I, had, I actually had a grateful moment yesterday and John will recognize this. So John emailed this to me yesterday to make sure that I saw it, and it really made me feel good. You know, it made me have a, a, a really nice feeling, and he gave me a nice compliment. So it was one of my grateful moments that I was grateful for yesterday. Um, last couple things, ask for help if you need it. If you're nervous to go to the grocery store, if you're nervous to go to the pharmacy, um, ask someone to do that for you especially anyone 70 and older. If you can have people do your errands for you so you're not put in that position where you could be exposed, let someone do it, whether it's your children, your grandchildren, a neighbor, or um, there are, are volunteers that the Senior Center has been working with um, to get folks that help. Um, and then the last one, just from, you know, Remember and remind yourself that we'll get through this. You know, it will end. We will get back to a new normal. Um, it won't be exactly what we always had as a normal, um, but we will get there, you know. And um, just happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Thank you. Great job, as usual, Heather. Uh, thank you. And uh, we, we all really appreciate what you're doing uh, with the nursing service. and. What you've been doing over the last few months has really been tremendous. So thank you. Uh, that picture you held up was a uh, from street artist Banksy. Uh, he yeah. he went, did an installation over in uh, the UK at, at a local hospital of that his latest, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, for the radio uh, listeners, it's a it's a young uh, kid holding up a 
a nurse uh, doll and leaving the, the rest of the superheroes in the basket to show that the nurse is the superhero. So I thought it was really cool. So uh, our next guest is Karen Patterson. Karen Patterson is a physical therapist who works with Acting Nursing Service. And she's going to have uh, some great ideas for how to uh, stay active while we're all at home. So, Karen, welcome to the program. All right. Thanks so much for having me. I'm really happy to be here um, to talk about ways to stay active while we're all staying at home during this time with COVID-19. I know so many of us are used to getting our activity by going to the senior center or to a gym. But the good news is that there are lots of ways that we can keep active while we're at home. Now, the American Heart Association recommends that all adults get 150 minutes of moderate physical activity a week. The good news is this can be broken up into small pieces and small chunks. It doesn't have to be done all at once in a day. So every little minute of movement counts. And there are so many ways to do that. Staying active has so many benefits, not only for our physical health, but also for our mental well-being. And that's even more important for us now. So the biggest thing I can say is to move more and sit less during the day. One of the things I've noticed is I'm not walking to the bus stop with my kids anymore. I'm not going to my car to go out as often. So just by staying home, we're moving less than what we're usually used to. Um, so we have to make moving a part of our day. I think it's important for everyone to listen to the advice that their doctor has given them about what they need to be doing while you're doing this. Um, but it's important to set a schedule for yourself to find a time that you're going to fit in some movement throughout your day. This has helped me to make sure that the day doesn't get away from me. Talk to your friends and family when you're talking with them. Let them know what you're doing to stay active. This is a great way to keep yourself accountable, but also to share ideas with other people and to get ideas for different things that you can be doing. Some ideas are walking. It's one of the best exercises that we can all do. If you have the ability to get outside, do it. Just make sure you're keeping distance, wearing a mask when needed, but getting outside is so important. If the weather isn't good, if you're not able to get outside, walking inside works just as well as walking outside. You can march in place or you can take laps around your house, put on some music, set a timer for yourself, but go ahead and walk within the house. It's fine and it works just as well as walking outside. Um, take advantage of what's being offered online. The Council on Aging is offering some of their classes online, which is so wonderful. And there are so many resources and free things that you can do through YouTube. I was able to find some 20 and 30 minute classes for my mother that were geared around senior fitness and exercise. She's really missing her time at the gym and she's made time during her day to do these. There's a variety of things she's doing and she's finding them challenging and that they're keeping her in shape while she can't be getting out. So um, just with YouTube, you wanna make sure that you're finding exercise that's within what's comfortable for you to do if something doesn't feel right, don't do it, but go ahead and try different things because there's a lot out there. There's yoga, there's balance, there's general senior fitness, so there's a lot of resources. I know someone already mentioned gardening. Gardening is a great way to get physical activity. It's good for your mental health as well. It's a great way to be outside. Um, while you're gardening, you want to vary the movements that you're doing. Try not to pull weeds for an hour at a time. Make sure you get up and walk around. Change your position so that you're not risking an overuse injury. The other thing that can happen with gardening is we're trying to lift things that are a little bit heavy. So instead of lifting a heavy bag of dirt, Break it up into smaller chunks and buckets. That way you're not risking your health or your back, but you're also getting more steps in by moving back and forth a little more frequently. 
also protect yourself from the sun and make sure that you stay hydrated. We can get caught up in what we're doing outside in the garden, so you just wanna make sure that you keep drinking water while you're out there. Another great way to stay fit that can be really fun is dancing. Put on some music and move around the house. Um, a couple weeks ago, my family did an online tutorial about how to do the hustle. We made the kids do it with us. It was really fun and it got us all moving. And every now and then we still break out into it. So dance, it can help lighten the mood as well because a lot of times things can get down and a little bit serious. So dancing is a great way to keep yourself moving. Throughout the day, there's lots of little things that you can do. Just stand up every half hour or so, get up, walk around, stand up and sit down a few times. It's great for the leg muscles. If you're waiting for your tea or your coffee, go up and down on your toes, stand at your kitchen counter, do some marching, some kicking to the side or back. All of these things can help. You can even keep up your strength by doing push-ups against a wall or against the kitchen counter. Um, that's a great way to help keep your upper body strong. The biggest thing is just to try to keep in mind to be moving throughout the day, sit less and move more. Um, and it, it does help everything. It's gonna help with your physical fitness and also with your mental health. And as with all exercise, keep in mind, just listen to your body, um, warm up and cool down, be aware of what's around your environment. I've had to clear some obstacles in my house every now and then to make room for the exercises that I'm doing. So we wanna make sure we do that. Stay hydrated and make sure you're wearing the right shoes for the activity. You find that we're at home, you might not be wearing the shoes you normally wear to exercise, but go ahead and make sure you put them on. Um, and that's about all, but I'm so glad to talk to you and I hope everybody is staying fit and keeps moving and I'll look forward to seeing everyone soon. Thank you very much, Karen. Uh, that's some great tips. And I think we may have an idea for a future segment if you wanna come back and show us how to do the hustle. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'm the right person for that. Thanks for asking. Uh, so, so now we get to the question part of the program, and we've received several already. Uh, I'd like to start with one for Dr. Knights. Uh, this one says, um, in general, um, okay, so it says, can, can the panelists ask, uh, can you ask the panelist, other than those in nursing homes, how have people affected the virus? Is it mostly essential workers and their families, for example? Um, is it um, elderly in nursing homes? Who is getting the virus? And if, if we are wearing face coverings and maintaining social distancing, how concerned should we be about a trip to the grocery store? So the, there is a broad selection of people that are getting it and sometimes we just don't know how they got it because people are contagious uh, for uh, you know um, sometimes it can be as long as two weeks but at least two two days after they may have acquired the virus so there's this period of time um, when people can spread it um, we don't know how people are getting it when they're doing everything that they're supposed to do um, and it's not very many who are um, and, uh, but, but it's clear that the virus is, is highly contagious. Uh, and as far as things like going to the grocery store goes, uh, you know, you're doing the best that you can if you have to go to the grocery store, um, because you have no one else to pick up your groceries. Uh, if you follow the social distancing and you do the hand cleaning and, and uh, wiping things down when you get back to your home, uh, you're doing the best you can. Uh, it's, it, it's unfortunate that we can't tell you a way to be perfectly safe, um, but, but we don't have that. Um, so I, I would say, think about the fact that the perfect is the enemy of the good. Uh, and if you tried to stay perfectly isolated uh, from this virus uh, indefinitely, uh, then, then that would be a pretty miserable life. 
Uh, and so I think you have to follow the guidelines that you're hearing uh, from our governor and do what he's recommending. Um, people who are at the highest risk need to take the most precautions because they're the most likely to uh, die from the virus if they catch it. Great, uh, thank you. Uh, here are a couple of questions about the case reporting. So every day on our website, we post uh, several updates and one of them is an update on number of cases. Heather uh, referenced the, the current number of cases in town, but there've been a few questions about what those numbers mean. So uh, here's the first one. Uh, how many of the uh, positive cases that were reported uh, have had symptoms? My, uh, it, de it depends on which population you're looking at. If you're looking at a uh, population where there was basically mandatory testing like, like uh, Life Care of Acton, um, and that's going to be a different set of numbers from if you're looking at the people who are only being tested because we have um, because they have symptoms, um, like like the people who who are active medical is testing. We're not just testing anybody at random, um, and and so it's it, you can't really judge from the number of reported cases what the actual prevalence is in the community, how many people actually have it. If we were testing everybody, then you'd have a much better idea of how many people were, were, were infected. Also, you don't have a way of testing to find out whether people uh, who have had it uh, lo long ago are no longer contagious. Mm -hmm. um, the antibody testing that's out there is not reliable. I recommend not using it. We don't know what it means. It can pick up other kinds of COVID viruses um, and it doesn't tell you you're immune. It doesn't really tell you anything useful. And you can order it online. You're, you can order it for yourself, but you'll find your physician's going to not be able to interpret it because we don't know what it means. And just because the FDA approved it under emergency guidelines doesn't mean that it's any good. That's interesting because there was a question about that. Um, when will we get a reliable antibody test? And what I'm hearing you say is that we don't, we don't currently have one that's available, certainly to the consumer market. That's correct. We do not have one. I don't recommend it. If you send the result from your, to your doctor, uh, you're going to get the same response back of, we don't know what this means and don't waste your money on it right now. I don't know when we'll get something reliable, um, but to give you an idea with, it, with uh, diseases like Lyme disease, we use an antibody test, but uh, after the initial infection, if someone can be treated and cured and still have the antibody and then still get Lyme again the next year because the antibody isn't protective. So, um, you know, we learn a lot just from the prior situations where we've used antibody testing to try to understand diseases. Great. Uh, well, thank you. So here's a, here's a question. First off, uh, the, the writer says, thank you to Heather and Dr. Knight and all the medical heroes. Uh, I heard, I heard, a, she said, she said, I heard a new saying, BDC, beauty during COVID. And there are many types of beauty and heroism uh, that we're seeing today. I, I agree with that. Uh, absolutely. Uh, so her question is, and this is a question that I, we actually have received a few different ways. Uh, so Heather, when we report uh, the numbers, we report, for example, 111 cases, and then we report a second number, which is the number of cases that are currently in isolation that we're actively monitoring. Uh, people are wondering, does that mean that the people in isolation are recovering or, or are, they, are they still seriously ill and in, and in the middle of it? And then once you answer that, what about the rest of the people? If you're saying we have 111 cases and we're monitoring 53, what are the 53 and then what about the rest of the people? Sure, so um, the number, the 111 number that I gave out earlier is the cumulative number of case, positive cases within Acton. And I believe the 58, I have to look at my notes. The 58 that were, um, are, are currently in isolation and under surveillance are positive cases um, that we are monitoring. Um, those that have, other than the 58, the majority of those folks have recovered within the community. Um, we've been following, um, you know, the 111 positive cases, um, as well as anyone within their household or any of their contacts that live within Acton. Um, I looked at that number yesterday for the first time in a while, and it, that number was 106 people. Not every one of them um, became positive. Um, the majority did not. Um, so, you know, they are on quarantine for 14 days after being um, exposed to the virus. 
Um, there are there were a number. Sure. Uh, let's, let's break that down for a second because I think that's a little bit confusing. So what I think what what I heard you say is that we had 100, 111 positive cases. Correct. And part of the work that you do is contact tracing. Is those 111 people you contact everyone that they were in close contact with, and you tell a certain number of people that you contact to quarantine. And what I think I heard you say is that you've told 106 people to quarantine themselves as a result of the 111 people that we found to be positive. So 106 people within Acton um, that we follow directly, but um, I, I honestly don't know and can't even begin to imagine the amount of people outside of Acton uh, because I know there was a question about, you know, where are we getting it? There have been you know, essential workers that have, have uh, tested positive and some of their contacts obviously from the work environment are outside of Acton. So those folks get contacted too and then their local board of health follows up on that. Um, there have been some folks in the hospital um, and there have been folks that, um, you know, like Dr. Knight said, it's a variety of symptoms. We can have someone who has very mild symptoms and someone with very severe symptoms and everybody in between. So it's such a unknown. Um, I've had uh, folks, even a nurse say to me who was exposed and did test positive that if she didn't think about the body aches that she had um, and the fatigue that she got, she would have just kept going and not even gotten tested. Um, but because those are two of the big uh, symptoms, she did get tested. I also, John, on the question about symptomatic um, positive cases, I, I, I can break down a little bit about that. The majority of cases we've seen in Acton um, as a positive have all, ha have all been symptomatic, the folks that we're following. The only ones that weren't, initially when uh, Life Care of Acton did their testing, um, we had reported, I believe, last Thursday on the 30th that there were positives at Life Care. Um, I believe the number was 28 at the time. All but one of those cases did not have symptoms. So one case had a fever. That was the only symptom. The other 27 did not have one symptom at all. So they were caught in that time frame where they had been exposed, but they weren't showing symptoms yet. So symptoms can show up anywhere from two to 14 days after exposure. So they were caught in that area of they were exposed, but they did not have symptoms yet. So they tested positive. And then as time has gone by, um, some of them have started to show symptoms, some have not. Oh, great, thank you. Um, that, oh, Dr. Knight, so you have <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted to comment. When Heather called me about that information, I immediately called Emerson because we knew some of these people were gonna get sick in the next few days and end up at Emerson and they needed to be prepared for a possible sudden influx of really sick elderly people. Uh, fortunately, it was not a not uh, a lot of people ending up in the hospital, uh, but it, uh, they were they were prepared over the weekend. Good. Well, that's just an example of the collaboration that uh, we're lucky to have between you and, and Heather and, and our other other medical professionals. So thank you for mentioning that. Uh, here's a, a non medical one that I can answer. Um, so if seniors miss the new transfer station hours between seven and eight a.m., what are the best times to for them to go otherwise. Um, I can tell you definitively, it's not Saturday. Saturday has traditionally been a busy day at the transfer station, and even though we've opened up a new day, uh, Mondays, it still is the busiest day of the week. So if you can't get there between seven and 8 a.m., um, the, the transfer station staff have recommended that you try to go Mondays or Wednesdays before 10.30. That seems to be a pretty light time, uh, but definitely not on Saturdays. Uh, great. So. Here's another question. Um, let's see. Oh, here's a here's a here's a good one. So no one seems to be talking about how do we get families back together. How do grandparents get to see and hug their grandchildren again? What if we all had a quick in-home visit? 
Wait, no. What if we all had an in-home quick results virus test that every family member took on a particular day? Those who were negative could visit and hug on a particular day. I know two and four-year-olds that are really want to give their grandparents a hug. Is there a way to have vi children visit their grandparents in a yard um, and and not causing harm to their grandparents? That's a that's a that's a tough question. I know Mother's Day weekend is certainly in my house. It's always been a big uh, event where we've had a lot of mothers uh, in my family all together. We've had a great time, and we're not going to be able to do it this year. And I'm sure many of you are struggling with that same reality. So. This, this question is just, is there anything that we can do safely to have some interaction with our grandparents uh, during this time? I, I can try that. Um, so one thing to be aware of is that testing a two to four year old is pretty traumatic for the two to four year old. It's not something that they're gonna tolerate um, without being held down. And, and, uh, and also there's a turnaround time for it. And, uh, and the child could acquire an infection between the time when you ordered it and the time that you're seeing the grandchild. Also, there's a false negative portion to it. We have patients who clearly have COVID sick enough to be in the ICU with all the classic blood changes and never test positive. So the test isn't, isn't perfect. Unfortunately, I think at this point, it's safer to do something like, like a Zoom and do that regularly you know, set up a time when, you know, you can, like, well, I've, one of the things I've been doing is reading uh, stories to my grandkids uh, uh, by Zoom, and they challenged me to write a poem about COVID, which I did, you know, and, and, they, and they throw out one-liners and Wait I rhyme them. Wait a minute. You wrote a poem? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I did. All right. Um, well, we have to hear that. It's way. about kangaroos and COVID, so um, I can send it on. <laughs> I don't know who to send it to, but yeah, yeah, it's 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 funny. It's got some adult humor in it too, so it may require the adults to explain a little bit. <laughs> so yeah, I did. Um, I don't know who to send it to though. Oh, send it to me, please. All right, I'll send it to you, and you can send it on, John. Thank you. Okay, so I I have a comment to that. So I'm a new grandmother who has a eight month old grandson who I'm missing terribly and have not held since probably the end of February when we started getting, um, you know, information on travelers coming back who were going, going to be on quarantine and we started to see the news reports. As a healthcare worker, I opted obviously to distance from the family, but um, we've been trying to and have successfully been doing um, FaceTime and Zoom meetings with him. Um, and he knows us, you know, it's exciting. He, you can see on his face that he knows who we are. Um, and it's even more exciting. We have gotten together with the kids and my grandson, Owen. Um, we do socially distancing. We, the nice days that are out, um, we put a blanket, you know, three different blankets in three different areas, um, greater than six feet. So we can all see each other and talk to each other, but nobody's close enough that if we were infectious, we would, you know, risk our our family members. Um, it's not ideal, but it works. You know, it's the it's the best that we're doing right now. Um, I would love to be able to hold him more often. Obviously, I'm missing the crawling and the you know standing up and the first words, but you know we're we're just going forward, you know, trying to FaceTime every day, trying to Zoom um, with all of them, all the kids every day, my mom and dad, you know, so it's, you know, it's definitely a challenge. And I understand, you know, that everyone's missing their families. Um, but to keep everyone safe, if we have to do virtual at this point, or do something outside, you know, greater than six feet apart, so you can have a conversation, we've done a pizza party, um, where everybody's gotten a pizza, so no one shared a pizza, that everyone had their own. Um, Mother's Day, we're trying to look at doing something else like that. So, you know, it's not ideal, but it does work. Well, I'm glad to hear that you were able to uh, see your, your grandson. Uh, it, it certainly is tough. And it's, it's tough to do social distancing with kids that run around. I think an eight-year-old is easier to keep on the blanket <laughs> than a five-year-old. Um, uh, but yeah, that's really been a challenge for a lot of people. Uh, we have time for one more. Oh, go ahead, Dr. Nice. Well, John, if you want, I can read the poem. <laughs> it's short. It's not long. All right, let's hear okay, it. Okay, you ready? 
If COVID has you feeling blue, come learn about the kangaroo. They're skillfully designed, it's clear. They have their motor in the rear. Up front, they have a fur-lined trunk where all the little kangas bunk. The baby ones are quite precocious. Right from birth, they're kangarocious. They grabbed the arm of one pickpocket and almost wrenched it from its socket. When at last they turned him loose, he'd had enough of kangaroos. The teenage kangaroo's romantic, drives her parents nearly frantic. All their warnings she eschews, and soon there's lots of baby ruse. The oldest beasts are quite sedate. They rest on their tails and meditate. The world's their oyster, nothing can, nothing can harry them. They are the kings of the kangararium. When I'm reborn, I'm sure I'll choose to join the ranks of kangaroos. Wow, that's very good. I've never heard, I've never heard kangaroos be, uh, described in so many ways. That's very good, very impressive, um, timely. Uh, well, thank you. That's a, that seems to be a, po a theme of our program here is, is, is uh, poetry. So we, we appreciate your contribution to that. Uh, we do have time for one more question. Um, it's actually uh, from a, a caller. Um, they want to know how often we should clean our masks. If we have these face coverings that we're wearing to go to the grocery store, what do we, should we wash it right away or can we wear it a couple times? I would suggest cleaning them once a day. Um, that, should be, that should be sufficient. Uh, you know, if you have healthcare providers, it's a different story, but, but for the average person, once a day, if you're out using it, that should be sufficient. Okay. So I can just mention, John, that um, we are getting donations at the nursing service and at the Council on Aging, um, which Sharon has shared um, those with us as we're in the building Monday through Friday. So if anyone is looking for face coverings that have been made by folks um, in the community, we are getting donations. So give a call to the nursing office or the COA and we're happy to meet, meet you, um, you know, at the front doors to hand that out um, if needed. So our number is 978-929-6650. Um, and then Sharon's number, who I hope I get this, 978 929, oh God, 652. <laughs> Thank you. 652 was the end of that. Uh, so uh, great. So we've, uh, we've reached the end of the, uh, the question and answer portion of the program. I want to thank our uh, guests, Dr. Knight. Karen Patterson and uh, our, our regular Heather York for their great contributions to the program today. And I hope you all have a great weekend and uh, happy Mother's Day uh, to all, all mothers uh, in, in your lives and, and yourselves, if you are a mother. Uh, we, we have uh, Sharon Mercurio, who I'd like to uh, have now uh, read her poem of the week. I don't know, I'm not sure if it's about kangaroos. If it is, I think we may need to talk about our, pro our program manager not too, too many kangaroo poems, but uh, <laughs> Sharon, uh, you're up. Thank you. I know, tough act to follow, Dr. Knight. <laughs> um, this poem actually came from one of uh, the staff at the COA. Today is actually the 75th anniversary of Victory in Europe Day, um, when the Allied forces announced the formal surrender of Germany. So um, it's called Victory Day. And the poem's by Joe Hurd, uh, a gentleman who lost two of his brothers in the war. Day of joy and of sadness, day of sorrow and of gladness, day of cheering and of drinking, day of crying and of thinking, day of prayer to God above, day of prayer for those we love, day of prayer for those we've lost, day of counting up the cost, day when allies fight is done, day when victory is won, day for peace so long expected, day for children, long neglected, day with factory wheels at rest, day with people in their best, day of crowds and shouting and noise, day of returning girls and boys, day of liberty, day to pray, day of victory, victory day. Beautiful, nice work. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, and thank, thank you again, all, all of our guests today. This has been the Job with John program, May 8th. Uh, we're signing off. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there and uh, stay safe, everybody. Mm -hmm.